Well, good morning, my friends, and welcome back to our Bible study here at Askeville Assembly of God. Yesterday, we began a 15-chapter section of the book of Ezekiel, and the first four chapters of that 15, this actually began in chapter 34 through chapter number 48, and the first four chapters basically was a promise that they were going to go back to their homeland and that God would give them a heart of flesh, a heart of flesh instead of of a heart of stone that they had had, that they would have a heart of flesh. But today's lesson uh, is going to be futuristic. Uh, beginning in chapter number 38 all the way through 48, there's 11 chapters here that are all futuristic. Um, now, I, this is not original to me, but I thought it was a great illustration of, uh, of, of what the prophets saw uh, in the future they weren't sure exactly when things were going to take place, but let me just show you this this little illustration here. Uh, these are mountains, uh, and uh, in these mountains, if you go to the mountains of North Carolina or Colorado or wherever it may be, you if you were to look at the tops of the mountains, all you would see would be the tops of the mountains. You would not see the valleys in between. I hope you can see this if I can get it a little closer for you. But all you can see the valleys. So what this is the prophet, for example, let's say this is the prophet Ezekiel or Isaiah, Jeremiah, any of the major prophets that were prophesying futuristic. And what they are seeing is the top of the mountain. They do not see the time frame in between. And so today in our lesson in Ezekiel chapter 38 through 48, Ezekiel is seeing things that may take place at the end of time, but he has no idea when these things will take place. But you and I, when we're looking at it, when we're studying it, uh, we're trying to determine when these take place. Let me just uh, give you an example here as we begin our study today. Uh, in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, uh, we hear uh, the prophecy about a battle that takes place of Gog, King of Magog. And um, when we look at this and look at the book of Revelation, there's a couple of possibilities. First of all, there's two battles that take place in the book of Revelation. One is at the end of the tribulation, and the other is at the end of the millennial reign. And so uh, what we see here is is uh, uh, Ezekiel is seeing something that is taking place uh, at the end of of the time or at the end of time, whether it be the battle of uh, at the end of the tribulation or uh, the battle at the end of the millennial reign, depending on how you're interpreting that. And we're not going to get into all of that. But uh, these two wars, one thing I want to bring out, I want to read chapter 39, verse number seven, and this is so important. And it says, and my holy name, I will make known in the midst of my people, Israel, and I will not let my holy name be profaned anymore. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. One thing I think it's important for us to recognize that God always gets the last word. Uh, his name is going to be glorified. And throughout history, there have been people who have belittled him, that have tried to discredit him or whatever. But I can tell you, God gets the last word. Now, as we jump on over into chapters 40 to 48, uh, we are going to see that Ezekiel gets a vision of the new temple, a new temple. Now, this is about halfway through the 70-year uh, captivity. If you read chapter 40, verse number 1, you'll see the dates there. And so we're seeing that, that Ezekiel is getting this vision of end times about 35 years into the 70-year uh, captivity. Uh, and uh, uh, in this vision of the new temple, once again, uh, I just want to remind you that in this vision... He doesn't know where this is taking place at. Uh, in fact, chapters number 44 to 46 uh, seem to be a little closer than the other vision that he has of the new temple. It's all about a temple that's being built. Uh, and so um, uh, the truth of the matter is part of it is closer than the, than the other part. And uh, so we have to recognize that as we're reading the Word of God. Now, in one of the commentaries that I checked on this new temple that's being built, there were three interpretations. Let me give them to you real quick. Number one, as you read chapters 40 to 48, um, it could be symbolic 
uh, temple picturing the eternal condition described in Revelations chapter 21 and 22. Or secondly, it could be a symbolic temple describing the blessing of the millennial reign. Or thirdly, a future literal temple built during the millennial reign. Now, the commentary went on to say that regardless whether it be a symbolic temple or whether it be a literal temple, the main te teachings are the same. So I think we can get the principles, that we can get the thoughts out of that, whether you believe or would interpret it be symbolic or literal, whether it be in the millennial reign or another period of time. But there's a couple, uh, several scriptures I think that I would like to close with this morning that are so, so very important for us to recognize. One is in chapter 43, verse number four. And it says this, as the glory of the Lord entered the temple by the gate facing east, the spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Catch that. The glory of the Lord filled the temple. Let me go over to chapter 44, verse number four. And it says, then he brought me by the way of the north gate to the front of the temple. And I looked and behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple of the Lord. And I fell on my face. Now I want you to stop just a moment and let you know that God's, uh, goal, his purpose, his intent is to fill the temple. When the glory of the Lord fills the temple, uh, there's, there's miraculous things that happen. Let me just back up just a moment. When you go to the tabernacle in, uh, in the book of Exodus and how they built the tabernacle, when it was built according to the plan, the glory of the Lord came down and the priest couldn't stand uh, because of the glory of the Lord, the Shekinah glory of the Lord. It's the same way with the temple. When you go back to look at Solomon, when he built the temple and it was built according to the plan. The glory of the Lord came down and filled the place. I will tell you that the Bible says in the New Testament that you and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit and God wants to fill us with his glory. He wants to saturate us in such a way that we radiate the glory of God. And that's what he desires from you and I today. But there's a future kingdom. There's a future temple that's coming that Ezekiel shows us and tells us about it, that the glory of the Lord is going to fill that place. And there's a, there's a, I, and this is kind of a, a, a side note, if I could, in chapter 47, verses nine and 12, because I, I like this one and I just want to throw this one in here. But in chapter 47, verses nine, and 12, it says this, uh, and wherever the river goes, now that river, there's a river flowing from the throne of God again in, in this new temple, whether it be symbolic or literal, there's a river flowing. And wherever the river goes, every living creature that swarms will live and there will be very many fish, fish. <laughs> you say, well, you, I see I like to fish. And uh, whether this be symbolic or literal is really cool to me for this water, uh, for this water goes there that the waters of the sea may become fresh so everything will live wherever the river goes. And again, if we look at this as symbolic as the river of the glory of God flowing, everywhere the glory of God flows, everywhere the river flows, uh, there will be life. Fishermen, verse 10, will stand beside the sea from Engedi to Englaim, and it will be a place for the spreading of the nets. Its fish will be of very many kinds like the fish of the Great Sea or the Mediterranean Sea. And so the glory of the Lord it just flows through this uh, new Jerusalem, this new temple. And uh, I, I think that's so important for us to recognize. One more scripture in chapter 48, uh, verse number 35. And this is the last verse, the last verse of Ezekiel. Notice this, last verse. The circumference of the city shall be uh, 18,000 cubits. And the name of the city from that time on shall be the Lord is there. The Lord is there. The Lord is there. My friends, I want to tell you, there can be nothing greater than have the Lord's presence with us. The Lord being there in this city. Well, this is something we look forward to. We look forward to a place where we no more pain, no more sorrow, no, no more troubles, that the Lord is the name of the city. Hallelujah. I want to just pray for you today. And let me just challenge you today. We don't have to wait to that futuristic temple to be 
filled with the Spirit of God, to be have the glory of God in our life. We can have the glory of God in our life today. All we have to do is say, God, come and fill me. Come and saturate me. I want to be used. I want my hands to be your hands, my feet, your feet, my eyes, your eyes, my thoughts, your thoughts. Everything I do and say, I want to be controlled by your glory, by your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray for our people today. Pray, God, you will help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to be sensitive and willing to be controlled by your power and by your spirit. Give us a wonderful and awesome day today. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. God bless you. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.